Hello, it's Nest Tilson here, and in this short video, I'd like to introduce uh, you to uh, one of the more powerful functions of Polyboard, which is uh, freeform cabinets. Freeform cabinets are cabinets which we can build not around a square shape or an L shape or a corner shape cabinet like the basic cabinets, but it, we can actually uh, draw uh, a shape, any shape that we want, and build a cabinet around that shape. Here's a cabinet I've just built, which is a which is a fairly simple bookcase, but which has a cupboard in the middle section um, that with two two doors, and this middle section is in fact is in fact um, more is deeper than the rest of the bookcase. Um, this bookcase has two glass doors either side, and it would be interesting to show you how I use the freeform mode to build this particular shape. So let's go into Polyboard and I'll show you how I did it. So here we are in Polyboard um, and let's start a new cabinet. Um, when you start a new cabinet we have the basic cabinet shapes that we can use off the shelf and we also have something which is called free shape. A free shape cabinet is a cabinet we can just draw any old shape and start using that sh particular shape to define our bit of furniture. To do that we just click on the edit button. Let's start a new and I'll show you how to draw a bit of furniture in this little little editor that we have here. Um, we just start drawing a line. Let's say we start drawing a line. I like to draw my lines from 0, 0 to start with. And I click, I put my coordinates in here and I click the tick point and that will give me the first point here. I'll put another point uh, down on the paper and so here and I'll say I'll give the direction of the point. So let's say that this particular point is at 1 meter 10 on the right hand side. When I click the tick, it replaces the point at that particular position. We have a grid here and we're snapping to the grid. We can see that the grid spacing is 50, so that if I take it down here, I know that I'm 20 down. Let's pull a, another line across and let's say 20 in front here. Let's take it across here and let's take that and close this shape. We have a shape here. These are just lines for the time being. Um, we can see that this particular line is um, selected and I'm going to tell it now with a type. I'm going to give it type, which is a characterization. I'm going to say this line is a side. This line here is a back. Here is a side. This is a front. And this bit is a side. This bit is a front. This one a side. And this one a Hang on. This one here, this one front. Um, let's see what that says. OK. We have our cabinet now, the shape. We say OK. And we have here the cabinet, the basic shape of the cabinet. In 3D, we see exactly how it's made. Now, let's uh, start designing the. Um, the multimedia cabinet that I showed you before that I had rendered into AutoCAD. Now the quickest way to do it is I want to plinth at the bottom and I have in my library a, a, a method and the method is a, a method that concerns the actual box of the cabinet and it's called plinth100. Um, if I click on that method plinth100 and I apply it to my cabinet here it will put all the sides down 100 millimeters below the um, the bottom. If I click here underneath, I get the plinth area, and I'll just add a plinth on the fronts, and I'll recess the print, put the print the plinth back at 30 mil, and that will give me the plinths on the cabinet. Now let's start designing the actual the different shapes of the cabinet. For instance. Um, I would like, when clicking here now, we don't have any division of the volume, of the main volume, because there is no separations, so no vertical separations. But I need to put in a vertical separation to separate it into three volumes. Let's put in, a, in some uprights. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to put in, a, in an upright that goes from um, one upright here, from the left, from this side here, and I will like this upright to align itself with 
the side of the bit of furniture here. Um, I, this upright I'm going to be putting in an imaginary upright and I don't really want visible on my model because I want to extend my side to go to the back of the model. So let's say that um, this upright I want to put it in at here we have here 300 millimeters. I'm going to take off 19 millimeters for the in interior distance which will give me uh, 281 millimeters and I will put in the, the upright goes in here. Let's put in now we have two volumes, one volume here and one volume here. But this upright, I don't want it to be a real upright, so I want it to be an invisible upright. So to get an invisible upright, I have defined a panel called an, a, 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 an invisible panel of 19 millimeters, so it will not show up when I actually design the furniture. And it's only put in there for to separate the two volumes together. I'm going to put in an upright on this side too, and an upright here, with exactly the same thing except distance from the right. We can see that there's 300 millimeters from the right, so that it will be the same, 281 millimeters from the right. And I'll, the material I'm going to give it is what we call a nil 19, which means an imaginary upright. Now, if I look in the cabinets, the cabinet has not changed at all. The volumes are still the same, but we do not see anything here. But I have put in the upright just to define the volumes. To actually close that volume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the side here and I'm going to say relative to the front, which is here, this front here, I want to push it back. And I want to push it back 181 millimeters. This 181 millimeters corresponds to the distance between here and here. And that's fine. 181 millimeters, if you see. Now, having done that, we've extended the side here back to the back. Let's do the same on the other on the other on the other upright and this time it's not this, this frontage three this is three frontage three here I'm just called frontage and we'll extend it back 181 millimeters and now we have the actual side is extended to the back of a bit of furniture what we need now is we want to cut out these sides let's let's make give a shape to the sides let's say the structure we want to give um, machine this structure. We're going to give it an inner tooling with a, a polyline I've already I've already called a front cut, which I've already built in um, in AutoCAD. It's something which we it's just for this particular bit of furniture. It's just a just a line I've drawn in AutoCAD. It's, it's not even important to have the size of the line because it, the size it, it's actually going to be parametric. Once you put the polyline in, let's say the width here. We only want it 200 millimeters. Now we only want it going back half to cut the furniture in half. Let's say that we want the we want it to be we want to position it via the in the, the lower right hand corner, and we want to position it on the furniture also by the lower right hand corner. And that we don't want we want it lined up with the front, and at the bottom from the bottom. Of the panel to the to the to the top of the beginning of the curve. Let's put it at 850 mil. And here we have the the panel has now been shaped with a particular curve, starting here at 850 mil and then going up just to the right thickness, the right width here for this particular part of the of the um, bit of furniture. Let's take um take this and copy this structure, and let's paste this structure here. So we have exactly the same structure on both panels. Well, the problem here today, here now, is of course our front is uh, our top. Our top is still sticking out too far. Let's move it back, and let's say that from the front we have um, a, uh, a recess that's moving back at 200 mil, and so now we have. That panel is now aligned with the rest of the bit, the rest of the furniture. Let's now take a. Um, we're going to put in here a fixed shelf. We've got a shelf, and we're going to put in a fixed shelf. And let's say the distance from the bottom is 750 mil. 750 mil. We can see that putting it 
at 750 mil is a bit high because we've still got the curves here. Let's just move it down again, down a bit. Here we have the parameters of the shell. Let's move it down to 700. And that looks better. Huh? That's going to give us the shelf down here at 700. Um, let's put some shelves at the top here. Let's add some shelves. This time we're going to put mobile shelves. And let's put three or four. Four, three. Same thing, they consider that the front at the beginning, they think the front is here still. But we're not going to, uh, we're going to send them back. And so we're going to just take this one and relative to the front, we're just going to push it back 200 mil. And this one too, we're just going to put it back 200 mil. And this one too, we're going to put it back 200 mil. And there we have our shelves in. Let's now put in some a, a few doors. Or oh, let's put a shelf in here for, as well. Then let's put a shelf in. So that's, that's a mobile shelf. Just put one in there, just for the fun of it. And this one will look better too with a few shelves. Um, well, let's put the door in first, maybe. Like if we get the doors in first, then we it's easier to select. Right. Let's put a couple of doors on this one. Add a, add a door, a double door. Um, let's put the double door, hang on, sorry. Add a door and a double door and we'll put it built-in door. It'll be easier. Here we have built-in door. Um, put a door here too. <laughs> we'll add a door and we'll call it a built-in door. This door too, let's add a door here. Built-in door. Now our cabinet now looks like this with the doors. Right, let's put a few shelves in. Add shelves. Let's put about six shelves, mobile shelves. Let's put some add shelves here. Six shelves, mobile shelves. And what we can do now is let's uh, give the shaping at the top of this bit of furniture. We'll do a modify the top. And let's put in a point around about here and pull it up. And another point around about here and pull it up. That will give us a nice shape. The top is now gone back to the it's extended that spot, this section of the top to follow the original frontage, the original facade, but we'll just have to move it back again, 200 mil. Sorry, minus 200 mil. And here we have the, the bit of furniture which is actually being made. Right, this particular bit of furniture now has got no assemble, assembly details at all. Let's just plot and apply an assembly method. Fittings method. Let's take uh, something like this. And now we have the all the assembly details which have been added. Which are actually added they've actually added cams and they've added uh, this, the manufacturing method has added the hinges. Uh, you'll notice that the hinges have been also added to these doors here, whereas in reality we don't really want hinges on these doors, maybe. Let's change a bit the bit of furniture. Let's say that these doors here, this door, I can get to it. I can't get to it when I go, I go up here and take a simple door here. <laughs> Let's say that this door, in fact, has um, on the side, we'll get rid of the fittings. No fittings. And we will make that door, instead of being in beach, let's put it in, in glass. And let's do the same for this door here. 
דור אחר. There is still hinges here. Let's take them away. Fitting link. And it's not to the vertical division, of course, it's to the side. We get rid of it. And now we can see that we have got rid of the hinges on that door. And here is our here's our bit of furniture. Once this bit of furniture is made, it's very easy to go over to File, DXF Export. We go into ProjectCAD and we just give it a render, very quick render, and we have this sort of image which comes up very neat. So, I hope that's been interesting for you and have shown you a bit how, you know, it's very simple to build, uh, build bits of furniture. And of course, as usual, everything is all the assembly details are calculated, then we can just put it through straight through a machine, a CNC machine, with just no problems at all. Thank you very much. Goodbye.